we will discuss about conditional expectation and dependency and independency so those things so coming to outline of today's lecture first i would like to discuss about conditional expectation so as we had already seen that uh, the concept of expectation and variance in the similar framework we can define conditional expectation and con conditional variance so what would be the difference between expectation and conditional expectation so in the process of defining expectation of a random variable what we do we need to know the corresponding probability mass function so suppose we are trying to find uh, expectation of x so what we do so here x happens to be a discrete random variable so we know the probability mass function of x so expectation happens to be weighted sum of the observed value of random variable x and we weighted some weight we provide it by the corresponding value of probability mass function so that means p of x at x so this is the expectation we had already seen that so here simply what what is the uh, main concept what we have to see it here we know the random variable x also we know the corresponding probability mass function and after that we talk about weighted sum as a as an expectation of that so it is talking about what one kind of representation representation of the uh, uh, various possible value of x that x is observing okay so it is just a single number okay so we had already seen that today we will talk about uh, that means if you are having more than one random variable x and y like this way we are having random two random variable x and y so what is happening that sometime it may possible that you observe uh, uh, y or uh, some value of y you are able to observe so due to that uh, that means simply you are introducing partial condition over uh, <coughs> y okay so partial condition is coming through y so due to that we what we observe we observe a conditional nature of x given y equal to y that random variable is observing this one this one is simply what we call it we are having a new kind of random variable that we are calling it conditional random variable simply we can call it with respect to that we had already defined conditional probability mass function x given y so this we had already discussed a lot uh, how we define conditional probability mass function of the random variable x given observed value y okay so we had already seen that so suppose we are having this kind of scenario and we know that uh, uh, this situation is again a random variable it is a conditional random variable what we call so we need to find the expectation of this one as well so if you are willing to find the expectation of this conditional random variable x given y so simple question would be here how to find expectation of this one what would be the distribution of or what what would what kind of protein mass function we have to proceed with here anyone would like to say that what would be the protein mass function in order to compute the uh, expectation of for this uh, random variable anyone what kind of weighted sum what which thing will provide the weight simply here one thing that we are trying to get take uh, value of x and x we will multiply with uh, some probability mass function what probability mass function would come here anyone anyone would like to highlight what probability mass function would come here anyone just try to guess what would be there you can comment whether px would come here or not are you able to listen me px oh uh, yeah px why so uh, here px will not come here what will come conditional probability mass function will come that means uh, probability of x given y would come here so that's way we are giving name to this one uh, conditional probability mass function because conditioning is introduced by this second random variable now tell me uh, whether here after finding this summation x will be exhausted what about y what would be the final output of this uh, conditional expectation what would be the final nature of this one definitely y would be there so it would be just a function of y so conditional expectation happens to be function of that observed value y it happens to be function of that so here y is uh, taking various possible value this a small y is one just one observation of uh, the random variable y so you can uh, relatively define a new random variable as a conditional expectation for each with respect to each possible value of y that would be 
expectation of x given y so now what would be this it would be here we are replacing is the specific or particular value of y by random variable y so it so right hand side also we need to do same thing so it would be g of y and what is happening here here condition expectation is coming as a function of the condition random variable y so that's why conditional expectation is again a random variable we had already seen, seen that function of a random variable is again a random variable vice versa also we can define uh, conditional expectation of y given x as a function of random variable y x it would be a function of random variable y and this one would be again a random variable so those things you will see it here these are actually conditional expectation would be a random variable from that perspective also we will see, see it here and after that we will discuss about dependency and independency of two random variable whether those are dependent or independent if it is independent very simple to calculate or uh, compute joint probability mass function uh, and the sim com computation would be very simple in case of independency okay but if there is a dependency then uh, we have to think over that so coming to conditional expectation uh, let us define conditional expectation as I had, I had already mentioned that conditional expectation happens to be a random variable and how we introduce this. So suppose we are having two random variables x and y in the same experiment then the conditional expectation of x condition on oh, random variable y is observing y it is defined as follows. So conditional expectation we are defining conditional expectation of x given y we are defining how we are defining as weighted sum of x the weight is provided by the conditional probability mass function of x okay or also you can say that we are calling it a posterior probability of x given y posterior probability also you can say that so one kind of posterior representation what we call it so after the summation what will happen we are taking summation with respect to x so x will be adjusted what is remaining thing only y will be remaining so conditional expectation of x given y it would be just function of y we can observe that it is a function of y now that is what is happening that for each possible observation y small y we can see that conditional expectation of x given y it happens to be function of y or g of y and hence conditional expectation defines a random variable as a function of or random variable how it is defined it is defined that conditional expectation of x given y it is function of the second random variable uh, through which we are introducing conditioning or through which uh, we are introducing partial information uh, so um, here simply that actually that uh, define conditional expectation as a function of that random variable so a conditional expectation of x given y it is a function of uh, y it is simply a function of, of y so you know about this one so don't worry about uh, exclusive representation of g of y because it is directly coming by solving this uh, 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 what we call it uh, explicit uh, summation so we will get an explicit form through various example we will see that okay now one more interesting concept is coming that uh, this set this one we are calling it law of iterated expectation it is very much interesting in sense that what is happening that uh, we, we have already seen that conditional expectation of x given y it is a random variable okay so if it is a random variable so uh, we know that every random variable is having a expectation provided we know the distribution of that random variable okay so it is a random variable so we can find expectation of this one this random variable or uh, conditional expectation as a random variable so we are willing to find expectation of this one so what is the expectation of this conditional expectation so expectation of this conditional expectation would be just expectation of x so this we are calling it law of iterated expectation and it is really interesting in sense that sometimes what is happening that uh, if you are willing to find conditional expectation of a random variable that would be a little bit complicated due to what uh, uh, implicit uh, probability mass function of x it would be very much difficult to compute expectation of x so what you have to apply you apply this concept the law of iterated expectation and through that you can compute the conditional expectation of that random variable so the, this law is very interesting and we can simply see the proof of this one uh, from the definition itself so we will go in reverse way that means we will start with expectation of x so we know that expectation of x it is defined as a weighted sum of 
uh, possible value of x. I always say the say that possible value of x. A possible value of x always be denoted by small letter and capital letter denote corresponding random variable. So that is the convention we know that. Okay. So expectation we are defining as a, a weighted sum of the possible value of x and the weight is provided by the corresponding probability mass function of x. Okay. So very fine. There is no any issue. So further what we will do here, uh, uh, if you try to see this uh, probability mass function, we can talk about it is talking about probability mass function of x. So what we do, uh, we know that uh, we can get a probability mass function of a random variable from a joint probability mass function by doing marginalization. So that concern we are introducing here. So P of X, it is what it is what we do. We just do marginalization of the joint probability mass function of X and Y. So joint probability mass function of X and Y, it happens to be like this way. And here we try to exhaust Y. In that case, X will be remaining and hence we are getting expectation of Y, X. Okay. So we do one kind of marginalization what I told that. So here we perform mar marginalization. We are taking summation with respect to X, but it is uh, very difficult to come up with the explicit representation of both joint property mass function of X and Y. So what we do here just to we factor it into this, this quantity, this quantity we factor in into product of uh, product of the property mass function of Y into uh, conditional property mass function of x given y. So this uh, this factorization is very much possible. So it is, you know it is directly coming from multiplication rule. Okay. So this joint has been and we are just uh, again this what what is this one? This one is again what it is equal to joint property mass function of x given y. Okay. X given y. So here uh, from joint property mass function we marginalize y and hence uh, this whole thing is what this whole thing is equal to uh, protein mass function of x just uh, protein mass function of x okay what is happening that just focus on here here you don't observe any y you don't observe uh, any x here here you don't observe any x so what you do you can interchange the summation you can take summation of, with respect to y outside this okay so we are uh, bringing it outside and taking the summation uh, outer summation is with respect to y and the inner summation is now with respect to x because we know the variability with respect to x so what does it talk about if you focus on this one what does it talk about anyone what is this It is just a conditional expectation of x. Yeah, conditional expectation. We are taking weighted sum of x where the distribution is coming with respect to conditional distribution. It is conditional property mass function. So it is a conditional expectation of x given y. So that's where this quantity we have written it like this way. Okay. We have written it like this way. So what is happening that we had already seen that if you are finding conditional expectation of x given y, y is here uh, if you fo focus on y this y it is one a specific observation of random variable y and we are taking summation with respect to y for all possible y okay so here it is what is this one this one is just a function of y if you find the con conditional expectation of x given y so it is a function of y so from here what you observe that actually it is what it is this one is this this one is again expectation of g of y we are calling it aspect, expectation of g, g of y then from expected value rule it is just what expected value rule it is coming in uh, from the framework of expected value rule so what is happening that this quantity is defining expectation of g of y okay and what is g of y g of y is actually it is defined as conditional expectation of x given y. So we just have written like this way. We have started with expectation of y and we arrive at expectation of conditional expectation of x given y. So that is the ultimate aim to establish law iterated expectation. You can go backward. There is no issue because equality holds everywhere. So you can go backward as well. There is no any issue. Uh, so.
I think this law might be clear to everyone. And uh, here, if you try to see here, so it is coming one kind of, we can call it, uh, you can derive it through law of total property, conditioning approach that you are introducing it here. So law of total property also, it is part of that, uh, it is coming here. So in various times you will see that, uh, I, later I will come up with such kind of example where you will see that uh, in, in order to compute expectation of a given random variable, uh, it would be very difficult because distribution of that expectation would be, that random variable would be not given. This, Distribution of other random variable would be given through which you can introduce conditioning and hence you can find the expectation of that through law of iterated expectation. So that approach is coming. Okay. In order to solve it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, marginalization of joint property. I discussed that. Uh, uh, marginalization concept i had already discussed that uh, it is talking about that expectation if you are trying to find expectation of x from the joint property so how you find it you find it take joint distribution and exhaust their y joint distribution happens to be function of x and y both so here we don't need y so we will what we do we exhaust or we take summation with respect to y then it would be just function of y x so this is the representation what we had taken in the first very first definition okay and here i further uh, i had already mentioned that it is very difficult task to directly come up with explicit form of uh, joint distribution of x and y so that i had already taken one explicit lecture over computation of joint property so how we compute joint property we compute joint property through that um, uh, multiplication rule or factor rule so what we do it is actually what it is equal to which one is here? Here, y would be easy to observe here. Situation in the question, it would be clear that y would be easy to observe. So you will come with distribution of y and after that uh, you observe distribution of conditional distribution of x given y. x given y. So this would be easy to observe. Once you are having observation of y, so such thing we had already seen that while calculating and that uh, professor may problem kind of things. I had already discussed how to compute joint property. So that I had discussed, I think you might be clear with that, okay? Is it clear? Is it clear or not? Okay, so I'm going to just uh, here discuss further about uh, conditional expectation as a random variable and we will talk about few more examples. So here we are taking an example like this way. Uh, suppose you are having uh, a, a two six-sided dice two six-sided dice, generally a common uh, dice having six-sided, okay. So one dice we are calling it D1, another dice we are calling it D2, okay. Uh, D1, is, uh, it is related with first dice, uh, first, roll, uh, first roll of the dice and D2 is second roll of the dice. So what are the po possible outcome in D1? It would be one, two, three, four, five, up to six and D2, it would be again one, two, three, four, five, six. So six uh, outcome would be associated with each, each of the uh, each roll of the dice okay now we are introducing random variable in the roll of two uh, uh, two roll of six sided dice so very simple random variable would be just count the number of faces that count so one so x uh, y is talking about uh, whatever outcome you observe in d2 so that uh, we are calling random variable y so uh, y will observe possible value what are the possible value of y it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So these are the possible value of y. Now we are coming to see that x is talking about sum of the outcome of these two roll. It is talking about sum of outcome these two roll. So what are the possible value of y? Anyone would like to x? Sorry, what are the possible value of x? It would be just sum would be that means least value would be two and the last largest value it would be what 12 it will go up to 12 so these are the possible observation of x so we we are having all apart from that if i'm asking what is that uh, tell me what is the distribution of x anyone anyone can talk about distribution of x directly what is the protein mass function of x anyone just try to point out and just tell me uh, which random variable is having easy representation of property mass function? What is the property mass function of y? Anyone? Just point out. 
Tell me what is the what is the protein mass function of y? Y is taking value one by six. That uniform protein mass function you are saying that. So why it is very easily uh, to talk about protein mass function of y. That that one is one by six. But if I am asking what is the protein mass function of x, it, just you will got stuck. It will take time. It is not easy to compute uh, uh, protein mass function of x directly. You have to do little bit. Uh, extra competition okay but easily you can talk about protein mass function of y that one is 1 by 6 so that's where we our idea is uh, we have to compute protein mass function of x with the help of this conditioning approach okay we can or with the help of conditional expectation we can compute that later we will see it first let's, uh, let us uh, com compute our here our job is to find uh, conditional protein mass function of x given y then we have to find Conditional expectation of x given y, one observation y, that one is 6, and then uh, we have to find conditional expectation of x given any arbitrary ob observation of y as a, a small y. Okay, that we have to find it. So, how we can find all these? Just proceed with this here. Uh, first, try to find this question. We will find this one later. Okay, so first uh, uh, we need to find this actually. This will come here uh, definitely. Without uh, this, you can't find this expectation. We need to find. So for given y equal to six, we first need to find conditional aspect, uh, probability mass function of x. So that means uh, our new random variable of interest is x given y equal to six. This is our new random variable and or conditional random variable what we call it and we will find expectation of that now, first protein mass function of that so how we can find it is very easy to find so for given y equal to 6 what are the possible value of x you can easily see that if uh, uh, x is talking about sum of uh, these two d1 and d2 outcome of d1 and d2 okay so uh, if y equal to 6 then what are the possible value of x easily you can say that 6 plus 1 6 plus 2 6 plus 3 and hence you can say that uh, possible value of uh, x would be what 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 so these are the possible so how many possible value are here six and all are equally likely so that's why conditional property mass function of x given y all product, uh, are equally likely anyone would like to highlight why it is equally likely anyone no idea anyone would like to highlight why it is equally likely Even if you observe the outcome of T1, those are also equally likely. Occurrence of 1, occurrence of 2, occurrence of 3, all the, those are equally likely. So when given y equal to 6, so x would be just uh, D1 plus one constant value 6. y equal to 6 is given to you. So here if you talk about uh, D1, D1 is uh, taking what kind of value? It is taking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So here D1 is what? Uh, having distribution of uh, uniform distribution. It is having distribution 1 by 6. And if you are adding constant, uh, then that one is not affecting. So that's why x is also having same, the same distribution 1 by 6. But value of x are different. Okay. So the distribution of x is directly coming from distribution of uh, d1. And hence we are saying that conditional property mass function of x given y equal to 6 is having uniform distribution 1 by 6. And uh, y is here, x is observing value, this value 7 to 12. Okay. Now, once we are having conditional expectation of x given y equal to 6, we can find conditional expectation of x given y equal to 6. How? As a weighted sum of x, uh, here weight is provided by the corresponding protein mass, conditional protein mass function. Okay. And just simplify it. Uh, after simplification, you are getting the specific value of this conditional protein mass function. It is 9.5. But here we could not see uh, how 6 is involved. 6 we are unable to see here. At least uh, if you try to see in an, uh, another in this concept i will give explicit representation so this actually you can write it like this way uh, it is actually 6 plus 9.5 you can write it 6 plus 
okay then this y plus this is coming so how it is coming uh, i will talk here okay so uh, let us define here j d1 we are calling uh, random variable z so z will take again uh, six value one two so z will observe this value possible observation would be one two three four five six and you know the distribution of z you know the distribution of z distribution of z would be what it, it would be one by six one by six okay so easily we can say that x is the uh, what it is sum of y and z and i will talk about independence nature but here just remember that uh, x y is related with d2 uh, second row and z is related with first row and any two row if you talk about you don't see any dependency between uh, any two row of a single dice uh, always it would be independent it is not outcome of one row is not going to affect the outcome of other row row okay other row so that's way there is no dependency between y and z and hence y and z are independent at the outcome level what we call it so so it is very very much clear okay now we compute conditional expectation of uh, <coughs> of x for each observation y of y random variable any question no okay fine so we are trying to here we are taking not an a specific value of y we are taking arbitrary value of a random variable y that a small y a small this y may be one may be two may be three may be four may, may be five may be six okay so it may be any of one to five one to six okay so this one is uh, having arbitrary index. okay so we are trying to find conditional, conditional expectation for this so simply from the definition of conditional expectation it would be the weighted sum of x your weight is provided by this conditional property mass function okay so what we do here uh, we try to convert this uh, try to represent uh, here it is coming uh, expectation of x so what we do we just play here what is x x is talking about summation of four y and z okay so here i have taken notation z i can take w as well so here there is no issue w and z both are here take it notation like w and z both are same here w here i have taken so here for each x this one is a specific x so for each x what would be situation here this one is it would be equal to w plus y for each x this uh, uh, <coughs> what we will get w such that uh, w plus y would be equal to x and this a small y is uh, inspired from this uh, y okay and this a small w is coming as a pre image of this x this w is pre image of x uh, okay that's where this uh, a small w is coming you need to know why a small thing is coming here okay you need to know that or you can put it z so here we know that the variability in x is what it is inherited in the what uh, it is inherited inherited from the variability of w and y is here uh, at a time it, uh, here y is fixed there is no variability in y okay y is fixed only x is varying x is varying how so uh, y because of variability of uh, this w so that's why we are writing here this summation is with respect to x and we know that variability in x is borrowed from uh, w and hence uh, summation would be converted with respect to w and just it is coming like this way further simplify it so if you simplify you see that summation is with respect to uh, w and y is here behaving like a constant with respect to this summation so easily you can take it out to, from this one so what would be so here you can take it out that means you just bifurcate these two summation so it would be bifurcated into two part one part would be summation of y into conditional property mass function of here it becomes uh, right it here it is actually this z is w w given y of w given y is observing this one okay 
we know that here summation we are taking with respect to w so this uh, you can take it out you can bring it out here and hence what is happening here we, uh, we, we just sum all the conditional probability mass function and conditional probability mass function is what it is a one kind of genuine distribution function or genuine probability mass function so if you sum with respect to all w this uh, summation it would be what this summation would be equal to 1 due to normalizing condition so that's why y into 1 but in second sum this, this sum with respect to w times uh, conditional probability that we have to look it is talking about expectation of w it is talking about expectation at w because here uh, what just it becomes here uh, here we know that w or z it is totally independent of y so conditional uh, probability mass function of w given y it would be just what due to that independent nature of uh, y and w it would be just probability mass function of w due to independent nature okay so what is happening that so it is talking about this one is what it is talking about weighted sum of w and and the, uh, here what weighted sum of w weight is provided by the distribution of w so simply we have to find we know that uh, what are the value of w it is taking 1 to 6 and uh, what is the distribution it is 1 by 6 so easily we can find the this expectation that one is uh, sum you know, 1 to 6 and divide by 6 okay so easily you can get that value would be 3.5 so that's why conditional expectation of x given uh, that y is observing value a small y it is equal to this linear function of y you can easily see that it is just this conditional expectation of x given y equal to this small y it is actually function of that specific observation okay it is function it is a linear function so we can simply from here verify that conditional expectation here uh, we are talking about each observation of y and hence we can comment over that the conditional expectation of x given y it is function of the random variable y it is a linear function or a fine function also we can say that it is an affine function of y or uh, this affine function simply in general framework we can write it g of y so you had already seen that conditional expectation happens to be a, uh, a function of random variable and hence a random variable any question till now no okay fine i'm going forward to, to discuss about another example so another example here i will take it here like this way this one is a little bit more complicated so we consider again two random variable x and y okay and we had already seen that uh, conditional expectation of x given y it happens to be a random variable so we denote it by z a new random variable z so z is again a random variable because it is a conditional uh, expectation of x given y and hence it would be function of uh, y and hence it would be a random variable now what thing is coming here question is coming that we have to find the expectation of uh, probability mass function of x and probability mass function of y we have to find the conditional probability mass function of x given y equal to 0 and y equal to n and we have to find that means we are finding this conditional probability mass function okay and we also we have to find the conditional probability mass function of the new random variable as a conditional expectation of x given y we have to find the if it is a random variable definitely it will have a distribution so what is the probability mass function of that and if you are able to find probability mass function of that random variable z we need to find expectation of that and further we try to verify law of iterated expectation what is that it is saying that expectation of conditional expectation is equal to expectation of the random variable x okay so that we have to find so this one is law of iterated expectation you can law of iterated expectation it is very much uh, essential from application point of view you, everyone need to understand then what is the scenario scenario that what is the joint distribution joint distribution of x and y is given to us so here it is let me so this is the joint distribution of x and y that is uh, joint probability of 0 0 is 1 by 5 joint probability of 0 when it uh, uh, 2 by 5 joint probability of 1 0 is 2 by 5 joint probability of 1 1 is 0 so this one is the joint distribution of 
it is given to you you don't need to compute so it is given to you so if i'm asking how to find a protein mass function of x and y so what you do uh, first find protein mass function of x so how easily you can find from the table itself so you can see that variability of x it vary along vertical axis so what we do we do row sum so sum this one 1 by 1 by 5 plus 2 by 5 it would be 3 by 5 then what is the uh, probability of observing x equal to 0 it would be 3 by 5 and sum the second row so row 2 plus uh, 2 by 5 plus 0 it would be 2 by 5 so what is the distribution of uh, uh, 2 by 5 x it is a Bernoulli distribution with probability of success you can call it 2 by you can include this one uh, generally we talk about x equal to 1 as a success and 0 as a failure so x is a, again Bernoulli random variable and what is the probability of success that means what is the probability of observing x equal to 1 it is 2 by 3 so x is a Bernoulli random variable simply it is taking just two value x taking 0 with probability 3 by 5 and x is taking value 1 with probability 2 by 5 now we see variability of y along horizontal axis so uh, how we can find distribution of y or probability mass function of y by doing column sum so do summation of this column so what would be 1 1 by 5 plus 2 by 5 it would be 3 by 5 uh, 2 by 5 plus 0 it would be 2 by 5 so you can talk about again y is observing value 0 with probability 3 by 5 and y is observing value 1 with probability 2 by 5 so y is observing just two value again y is a Bernoulli random variable the next question would be what is the probability of success then what is probability of success it would be decided by the value of 1 so y is uh, taking value 1 with probability 2 by 5 and hence y is a Bernoulli random variable with probability of success 2 by 5 so both x and y are Bernoulli random variable so easily we got it uh, from the table of joint protein mass function so what what is happening that we one kind of thing we did marginalization of joint protein mass function through that we can get uh, protein mass function of x and y easily both happens to be Bernoulli random variable with protein of success 2 by 5 we will try to find next question that we are willing to find kinetic protein of x for two of possible observation of y one for zero and one for one so we try to find here conditional expectation of uh, zero given zero so focus uh, given zero this this one is the value of y so focus over here y equal to zero so you have to focus over here y equal to zero so you are talking about this column so uh, how many times x equal to zero is observed when y equal to 0 uh, out of total observation of <coughs> again x so here we can see that uh, if you what you do uh, you can apply the definition of conventional probability but uh, the uh, smart way is that you can observe that uh, if you talk about uh, these two probability then uh, out of three times total uh, how many times you it is 3 by 5 total sum is 3 by 5 the out of 3 by 5 1 by 5 is happening x equal to 0 okay so that means simply you can say that uh, one time out of three times and uh, this uh, 0 given uh, 0 is happening x, x is okay so that's where conditional, conditional probability mass function of 0 given 0 it would be 1 by 3 okay easily directly you can compute it likewise uh, if you are willing to compute this one uh, probability of conditional probability of x given y equal to 0 how you can say that so out of three times two times uh, it is happening so it will just it would be just probability 2 by 3 this conditional probability is 2 by 3 so again if i talk about uh, here this random variable x given y equal to 0 it's taking two value x equal to 0 or x equal to 1 it is taking two value x equal to 0 and x equal to 1 and x equal to 0 it is taking with probability 1 by 3 and x equal to 1 it is taking probability 2 by 3 that we will call it again a probability of success so it is just taking two value with uh, two different probability so we can talk about this uh, this one is again a what it is a Bernoulli random variable then what is the probability of success again 2 by 3 likewise also we can compute uh, conventional probability of 
x given y equal to 1. So here focus on second column. Okay. So uh, this one x given sorry x given y equal to 1. So 2 by 3 it is happening. So you can uh, see that only 2 by 3 is happening here. This is joint across it is uh, what is the probability that one is 0. That one is for x equal to 1 for given y it would, it would be 0 probability. So everything will what? So only 0 is happening. So 0 is happening with probability 1 and 1 is happening with probability 0. So that's where uh, conditional Conditional distribution, uh, conditional random variable x given y equal to 1, it is a very much certain quantity and uh, very much certain. What is the certainty here? That x given y equal to 1 is taking with probability 1, it is taking 0. That means it is a certain quantity. Then that x given y equal to 0, it is a very much deterministic or certain quantity. It is not having a probability distribution. Now we have everything. So we trying to find probability mass function of z that happens to be conditional expectation of x given y so do we have time just uh, just i will talk about this after that wind up this so here uh, how we can find conditional expectation of uh, x given y we can easily find it like this way so here uh, we here conditional expectation conditional expectation of here it would be what function of It is function of y, random variable y. So here we apply expected rule in order to find. So how we find it? We are finding it as a summation of conditional expectation of x given y equal to small y times the weight provided by distribution of y. We know that that one is distributed in Bernoulli way and we do summation of with respect to y. So we do summation with respect to y. So we can easily see that the value of conditional expectation is it is take, taking two value 2 by 3 with probability 3 by 5 and it is taking 0 with probability 2 by 3. So you can compute all these value. You can easily compute all these. It is taking just two value 2 by 3 and 0. So various situation here y one one situation is coming with respect to uh, y equal to 0 another situation is coming with respect to y equal to 1 so different different property is associated so you can see these are the so z z is taking two value 2 by 3 with property 3 by 4 and it is taking 0 with property 2 by 3 so it simply uh, says that uh, what is the property mass function of z you can say that uh, property mass function of z is that means uh, when z is equal to 2 by 3 the property is 3 by 5 and when z equal to 0 property is 2 by 5 so it is it is again a what uh, it is not directly we can say Bernoulli uh, random variable uh, yeah from the two trial success and failure you can say that it is Bernoulli because here z is taking uh, two by three not one so you can say that it is one kind of uh, z is also uh, distributed in Bernoulli fashion and z is taking these two value two by three and zero these two possible value so we are having the possible value of z one value is two by three another value is zero and also we are, we know the corresponding distribution so we can find the expectation of that so expectation of z it would be 2 by 3 and also you are willing to find variance of z so before uh, compute variance of z find the second moment so it, it is easy to compute second moment so com compute second moment it is 4 by 15 and hence takes difference of second moment with a square of first moment okay that means a square of expectation of z. It will talk variance of z. So variability also you are able to. It is giving variance of z. Okay. So other thing we will discuss in next class.
okay if you are having any question you can ask otherwise we are going to wind up today's lecture